Hello, and welcome to another production of the Technology Training Team. Today, you'll learn about Google Meet. Google Meet is one of two tools that teachers in Prince George's County Public Schools may use to deliver instruction via video conference with their students. In this video, you will learn about how to enable Google Meet from Google Classroom, the layout in Google Meet, how to share the screen in Google Meet, and how to disable the Google Meet link in Classroom. Let's get started. In another video, you already learned how to navigate to Google Classroom and how to get your Google Classroom started. In this one, we'll take a look at the settings for your Google Meet link. Notice on the Stream tab, your Meet link is visible. However, it is currently hidden from your student's view. Let's take a look at the class settings to find out how to enable the Meet link. Up in the top right corner at the Settings cogwheel, click to locate the settings for your class. You'll notice in the general section, your settings exist for Google Meet. A Google Meet link is automatically selected for you. However, clicking on the drop down menu to the right of your Meet link will allow you to either copy or reset your Meet link. Notice, visible to students is currently turned off. Sliding the slide bar to the right enables the Meet link so that it becomes visible for students. Once you've made adjustments to your visibility for Meet, click Save. Notice the Meet link on the stream is now visible for your students. It's recommended that you only have your Meet link visible for students when you're actually ready to have a video conference, you may either let your students know the location for your Meet link on the stream, or from the settings gear, you may copy the Meet link and post the link in your classroom. Remember to copy the link, choose the drop down menu next to your link, and choose copy. Now, let's see how to post your link in your Classwork tab. Choose Classwork, click Create. For this example, we're going to choose Material to enter the title for the video conference. In the description section, you may include any specific direction that you have for your students. Choose Add and then link. Paste your link and then click add. If you have a topic assigned for video conferences, you may choose one from the list or you may create a new topic. If you are meeting with a specific group of students, you may also choose from the all students link the, the names of the students in which you will be meeting. Once you've made your necessary changes, click Post. When you're ready to start your meeting, you may do it from the assignment or material that you just posted or on the Classwork tab at the top under the Meet icon. When you are beginning a video conference for the first time, you will need to give permission to use your microphone and camera by clicking Allow. It may also prompt you to show notifications. It's a matter of preference whether or not you want notifications to begin. As you're beginning your meeting, you'll notice that the microphone will automatically be active as well as your video. You may choose to turn off your microphone or turn off your camera until you're ready to get your meeting started. Notice that when it's red, both are off. When it's gray, both are on. 
click join now. Notice that you can invite others by copying the join information. However, in this case, your meeting is specifically for your students and they should join using Google Classroom. Now your students will begin to join your meeting. Let's take a look at some of the settings once you're in Google Meet. When you click along the bottom of the screen, notice to the left, once again, you see the join information to join your meeting. Notice you have the option to mute your audio. You may leave the call or hang up. However, as a teacher, you should always leave the call last. You may show your video. You may also turn on closed captions so that those who have audio or hearing issues may see the conversation that is taking place within the actual video conference. Choose present now when you're ready to present information. The three dots all the way to the right give you additional options to record your meeting, to change your layout, full screen, as well as some setting options. Near the top of your screen, notice that you can click on the people icon to show everyone in your meeting. You also have the option to select chat. On the people option, notice that you have some additional options for each person who's a part of your video conference. The drop down menu to the right of a person's name allows you to pin their video, to mute the person that's not already muted, or to remove someone from your meeting. If a participant becomes disruptive in your class, rather than leaving the call or ending the entire call, simply remove them from your meeting. The person that has been removed will not be able to join the meeting again. As a reminder, you should not record students' faces or voices during your session. With that in mind, you may choose to record simply when you're speaking. Another option that you have would be to pin your video so that when you are recording, your video is the one that is showing or your image is the one that's showing. To do that, hover on your icon and choose pin. And then from the three dots, choose record meeting. You should make sure that your students know that this meeting is being recorded and to remember to keep their video and their audio muted during this part. Notice at this point, you receive a prompt that the meeting is being recorded. Your students also hear a response that the meeting is being recorded. Additionally, when recording, be sure that the People tab is closed so that the names of your students are not visible in your recording. When you'd like to present, choose Present Now, but make sure that your information that you'd like to share is already open and visible for you on the screen. So in this case, you have the option to choose to present a Chrome tab, which would be one tab in your browser, a window, which may be multiple windows in your browser, or your entire screen, which will also show what is open on your desktop. In this example, I'll choose window, and then I see the activity that I'd like to present to my students. At this point, I am presenting my screen. I may not be able to see that in this case because my tab is pinned. However, I can see the presentation if I choose the option up at the top right corner. When you're ready to stop presenting, simply choose the option that says stop presenting. And at this point, you may also choose to stop recording if you'd like to engage with your students. Remember to stop the recording. You simply return to the three dots and choose stop recording. All recordings are automatically saved in your Google Drive when you're logged in. 
Now that your meeting is over, you want to be sure that you are the last one in your meeting before you leave. So select the participant or people icon in the top right corner. Make sure that all your students are gone. If they are not, remember that you can remove any student from the meeting by clicking on the drop down menu next to their name. Once they are removed and you are the only participant left in your meeting, you may end your meeting using the telephone option down on the toolbar at the bottom. At this point, it's time to return to Google Classroom to disable your Meet link. When you return to your Google Classroom to disable your Meet link, simply click back on the settings cogwheel in the top right corner, scroll down under the general section to your Meet settings, turn off the option to make your Meet link visible to students by Sliding the slide bar to the left, choose the drop down menu next to your Meet link and choose Reset. That way, the previous Meet link is no longer available for your students' use. Remember to click Save when you've made those changes. If you also added a Meet link in your Classwork tab, it's important that you delete that link as well. So let's click on Classwork and navigate back to the section where you posted the link before. Next to that particular assignment, click on the three dots and then simply click Delete. Once confirmed, click Delete again so that the video conference link is completely gone. Now, if you work with younger students, it may not be necessary to disable or delete Meet links each time. The choice is ultimately up to you. The important piece is to remember to disable or delete links to prevent students from reusing them without you being present. And that's it. This has been another production of the Technology Training Team. Thank you for watching.